Thanks for tuning in to The Real Deal Show, brought to you by ebodyboarding.com and Tribe Boards. Is that not good? I don't know. It's not so close. Ready? Nope. Look at the camera. Okay. We should roll this pre-stuff in here, right? <laughs> Chest out. Hey, everybody. Jay and Vicky Real once again coming at you with another episode of the Real Deal Show. Thanks for joining us today, Vicky. How are you? Good. <laughs> Friday afternoon, it is, TGIF. Yeah, it's a Woo! Friday afternoon in uh, April, and um, today's topic of conversation, Vicky. I thought because tribe boards is such a big part of what we do now in addition to ebodyboarding.com and our other business, Junior Guards. But Tribe, a lot of people ask us about Tribe boards and how we got it started, right? So I thought we would talk about sort of the origin story of Tribe boards and how we, you know, um, came up with the idea and started the company, right? Right. Okay. Does that sound like a good idea? <laughs> Sounds like a great plan. We're going to fill you guys in on the whole scoop. <laughs> But to get to that, we have to go back in time. And we're going to go back to the year 1999. It was a huge year for us in many, was. many ways. Yes. What's the biggest thing that happened to us in 1999? We got married. I'm just testing. <laughs> remember he remembers that stuff. These I don't. details. And what else happened in 1999? We both lost our sponsors. Yeah, end of 98. Well, 98, yeah. What yeah. else And happened? we started a business. We started e body e Well, no, it was unrealsurf.com. That was the original name. Yeah. Some of you OGs may remember that was our original name when we first started the business, and we changed it after maybe six months to ebodyboarding.com. Mm -hmm. A niche. Um, yeah, but... There was another business that we also started in candy? 1999. Yes. Is that candy? Oh, yeah. And I apologize for was those of you. Was it 99? Yes, it was. I apologize to those of you listening um, on the audio podcast because I'm going to do a visual moment here that the YouTube uh, watchers will be able to see. And this was our first product poster for candy bodyboards. I'm going to put it up to the camera so if you're watching on YouTube... You can kind of see. And this was some real marketing genius, I think, from us. Um, I think I had a lot of input on this. Well, first of all, <laughs> well, back up, there really wasn't many boards for girls back then. Yeah, there wasn't a, a body board that was specifically made for women in the U.S. Now, yeah. in Japan, it was a different yes. story because you had a signature model. Not your, that year, though. No, but yeah. before that, I'm talking about. Oh, right. With yes. a, a Manta, Arena, Arena Bodyboards. Yeah. Body Manta, Manta so made them. So women-specific boards did exist, but not in the U.S. market. So I think your and my feeling uh, was, hey, let's give this a crack. Let's have a women-specific brand. So we started with um, two models, and that was the Taffy and the Starlight. And we had soft top surfboards, and we had all kinds of cool little marketing, um, theme, candy themed stuff on here. Sweet boards it for says, her. It says, <laughs> all candy products are inedible, sorry. And then we have yummy sticks made we to support your riding style and vibe. Softer, thinner, lighter, brighter. Are you going to say something? No, I was going to say we thought they were pretty cool. Well, we thought they were cool. And then, but look, here's another one. The Starlight, we describe it as light and airy poly pro center, creamy cross link top layer for longevity, high performance. Oh, misspelling. No, oh, that kills me. I can't believe you didn't catch that, Jay. High performance shape to pull all the tastiest moves. <laughs> and then on the back of the, po oh, by the way, there's some really funny pictures here. If you can see this. Uh, there's Vicky sitting at a computer. This is, I don't think this is our computer. Let me see. Um, and there she is using a, a, heat, torch. a heat gun. Oh my gosh. Like I don't I think you've ever no. shaped a bodyboard in your life. I don't know where that came from. So that was pure, uh, you know. Marketing. Well, it was marketing. And our dog is on there. So women's know? bodyboarding in the 90s was really big in Japan, in Brazil. 
So I think our thoughts back then was, you know, let's make boards for girls and let's make them smaller and thinner. And, you know, there wasn't boards out there that were made for women. So hence the reason we came up with candy boards. So candy. So um, we, we gave it a try. I think we lasted maybe two years with candy body boards and it just didn't really catch yeah. fire. Puerto Rico, we had a couple of counts down there. <laughs> Yeah. That, we gave it a shot, right? Yeah, and it was hard to collect money, and, you know, it's kind of a nightmare business to get into the, well, wholesale, the, wholesale, body, the wholesale body wedding business, tracking down payments and, you know, getting surf shops to buy your products, and then they want consignment, and then collecting money from them, and the manufacturing, you know. Do you have your mic on? Oh, I yeah. I do. Just yeah. checking. I didn't Sorry. see it. I, I don't mean... know if you can see it. Yes. But yes. anyway, it was cool. I, the boards were great. We actually, where did we make them? So, yeah, we had a guy up in L.A. named Chris Wellington. Oh, yeah, that's making right. Making the boards yes. at a factory mm -hmm. up there. He also made some TNC boards. Number and, six. Uh, original number think, six yeah. boards and maybe some Wave Rebels. Um, yeah, back when bodyboards used to actually be made here in the USA. Um and there's only there's still a couple brands, Custom X being one of them, um, of course, that are still made in the U.S. Um, but yeah, it's a few Oops. and far between. Phone's ringing. You want to get it? No, I'm not going to get the phone. <laughs> Sorry, customers. We're closed for the weekend. <laughs> anyway, um, so fast forward to um, somewhere around, let's see, it's 2000, 2023, somewhere around 2018, we thought, let's... Let's have a stab at this making our own brand. Well, there's a reason we did that, though. Because, okay. you know, we'd run ebodyboarding.com then for many years. And so we people kind of trusted us and would call us and say, you know, what board should I get? I'm this big. I'm t this tall. I weigh this much. You know, and there was boards out there that we wanted that weren't there, <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. There was boards out there that didn't exist that would fit these boards type of riders. So we were kind of thinking we should make our own boards and then we could fit every person that called us. So there were holes in the market. Yes, that's basically it. Um, needs yes. that weren't being met by some of the other oh, brands. See, he so, says it so well. Uh, you did a great job. Oh, thanks. So we thought, okay, let's have a stab at it. We'll go conservative. We'll just come out with one board. We'll start with one board. And we'll see how that goes because Did we, we, yes, we had. Um, <laughs> oh, but wait, we haven't told everyone oh, we that it was. Up again? Well, yeah, it was Rad Pig. I right? was getting oh, into sorry, that. Sorry, honey, go for it. So there was going to be one board initially. So and then we were going to launch a whole line of boards, and actually it branch out into accessories, bags, leashes, and so forth. So we had to come up with a name for the brand. Vicky's let that um, piece of information out yeah. a minute ago. We decided, Vicky thought it was very cute. Pigs, she loved pigs, thought they were cute. I don't think it was because of so, pigs. I just wanted it to be <laughs> Well, you thought it'd be and, hip and yeah. cool to do a pig-themed <laughs> brand. Yeah, I did. So we developed this whole sort of marketing plan around the porcine <laughs> theme. That's pig theme for those of, of course, you who are Yeah, I did think it little... was awesome. Bacon. So, yeah, what so we, we had, we were going to, the, the leashes were going to be called, you know, hog tails, which yeah. actually Maury That's actually right. had a hog tail leash already. Mm -hmm. The fins were going to be called hooves. And by the <laughs> way, we did have a fin design too, one board and one fin. So the rad pig hooves, <laughs> the, See, and the board was going to be a big guy board because that was a, a hole in the market. At that point, nobody was really... Uh, selling high volume boards. Now it's kind of a, a thing. Every mm -hmm. company has a high volume option or two. Um, and so we thought, okay, Rad Pig, the board will be called the Hog. It's the big guy board. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have the little kid boards are going to be called the Piglet. And the bags are going to be called the Pig Skins. <laughs> so we had this really cool, and we developed a logo and we did like trademark searches and we bought the domain and so we launched it and the rad pig hog came out it was a popular board but we noticed pretty quickly what, what was what was the problem that we had with the rad pig hog um the big guys that wanted it didn't want to ride a board that was 
like named like a fat pig. Well, basically, it, it was called the hog and yeah, had a picture like, of a yeah, pig on it. Yeah, so and and yeah. some guys would call and say they were kind of I don't want to ride a board that says hog yeah. and has a picture of a pig on it because yeah. they were you know they're self conscious maybe about their weight. Not yeah. a lot of guys, no, but some. And yeah. so we started rethinking, like okay, we've only launched one board and one fin and the. The, you know, the fins, um, we could change out the logo on the fins. We could change the logos on the board. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like thought about it and how do we come up with the name? I, I know, but I don't want to be the one talking all the yeah, time. Yeah, well, maybe I, I want to make sure I'm right because your memory is better than me. But to me, we came up with the word tribe because bodyboarders are a unique cool type of wave riders and we're kind of a tribe we stick together we we're passionate about it and we don't really care what surfers think or what skimboarders think and we are a unique tribe of wave riders perfect so, oh good i got it right <laughs> <laughs> so uh initially i you know i started thinking okay let's have a tribal themed line of products so we came up and changed the name of the Rad Pig Hog to the Tribe Chief, right? So we pivoted pretty quickly, changed out the name of the, the product before we had launched the whole line. And, you know, we had the, the Chief and the Boss and the Warrior, and we had, you know, some other boards, the Scout, you know. So I was trying to stick with the tribal theme. That became harder and harder. Um, yeah. In fact... We even had a board, and we still have a board called the Squaw. Yeah. And we later learned, apparently, from a couple people that this is possibly a derogatory term for Native American female. And I'm know. thinking a Native American female, yes, that's what we need to call the board. It was like a positive thing. And then you're always going to get haters, you know, and there yeah. was some haters. I can't believe you would name it the Squaw. And we didn't have that intention at all. It was no. the absolute opposite. But, you know, it was a bummer because it was a... Yeah. Well, it's you know. still we still sell them. We still have a few in yeah. stock, but... Um, there was maybe two or three people that told us I it was know. a derogatory, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm old, I'm from the old school. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, it just wasn't on my radar. In any case, um, to move forward. So yeah, we started initially with that one board and one line of fins and then we started expanding out. We, um, launched another fin, the tribe the first one's called the, we changed it to call it the T1. And the second fin, which was a narrower fin for your Great feet. Great for women, little kids, yeah. The T1, by the way, is a wider fin for wide feet like I have. And the second one was a narrower feet, which works good for a lot of women and kids have smaller or narrower yeah, feet. So lots the of T, sizes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the T2 came out. And mm -hmm. we developed our own colorways had the logo put on the fins. And since then, we've actually come out with a T3 that's sort of in between a wide mm -hmm. and a narrow fin. Um, and they're all symmetric fins, so you can wear either fin on either foot. Um, and really wild colors. That's Vicky's doing. Well, I'm yeah, we, the... like the T2 <laughs> in particular, they fit a lot of junior guards and kids, you know, so they want the wacky colors and the, you know, the crazy colors. and. It has many sizes, so it's great for smaller, narrower feet. So the T1s right. are made for like the wider, older adult. <laughs> yes. Feet. I'm uh, talking about right. feet. Right, yeah. because I have very wide yeah. feet and they yeah. work for me. So Bigger sizes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we and we change the colors about every year. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we like to change it up, keep it fresh. Um, and it, and regards to the boards same deal the factory that makes our boards there's i've said this many times there's two major factories that make most of the high-end body boards one is in indonesia that's brody asia they make brands like uh, bz mori nmd vs science hubboards pride and nmd i already said that um, a lot of brands mm -hmm. are coming out of that factory and the other factory is in taiwan it's called agit and they make 
Hour boards, they make all the catch surf surfboards GT. and body boards. The GT boards function mm -hmm. nomad. So you get the idea. The consolidation in the manufacturing has moved offshore. That's several years ago. And actually, the quality is outstanding um, with all the brands and all those factories, they, or both those factories. They do great work. Mm -hmm. So um, ours are made at Agit. So as a result of that, um, we place orders a couple times a year for big shipments of boards. Um, and the colors that are available to us change every time we order. Sometimes colors that we want to use aren't available the next time we place an order. So a lot of people ask us, well, why don't you just, you know, keep ordering the same colors? I like that color on that model. And that's why, because yeah. even if we want to, sometimes a certain color isn't available at the time of our production run. Or if we want a purple polka dot board, you you have to order in huge quantities to get the colors that you want. Catch Surf's able to do it for a lot of their slick skins, like the graphic bottoms, because they're bigger than us. <laughs> so yeah. they can afford to order 800 boards in this one slick bottom where we're yep. a smaller business, so it limits us in that area. But that factory does great work. Yeah. They, um, you know, they have state-of-the-art materials and we've been able to tweak some of the designs. For example, the current version as of April 2023 of my board and of uh, Vicky's new board, the Bungie. Which was the Squall. We changed to it to the, squall, the Bungie, the which bungee. is boomerang in Aboriginal, just letting okay. you know. <laughs> they have <laughs> half stringers in them. So we wanted yes. to get the flex in the nose and have stiffness in the back half of the board. So we've had those made with, with the half stringer. Um, and there's different stiffness um, agents. Like for example, that factory has something called Skin Tech, which is um, unique to that factory. It's mm -hmm. a proprietary um, material that they use. It's essentially a layer of slick with mesh in it that goes under the deck skin that you can use a low density core to keep the weight of the board down, but still have a nice springy board that's very durable. So we found that combination of materials, at least for my board, which has skin tech, Vicky's doesn't, um, that works really well, yeah. you know, for, for me as a, mm -hmm. you know, as a heavier and person than yeah. Vicky, obviously. And I feel like that's what's great about the Tri brand, not to toot our horn, but we are bodyboarders. We ride all over the world, warm water, cold water. And we know what works for us, and we also know what customers want. So being that we're the owners of e-bodyboarding also, I feel like we, we know all the customers that buy from us from the very average beginner t that doesn't wear a swim fins that wants to just jump in the water and catch the whitewash yeah. to some of the pros that are, you know, charging big waves. So we've kind of made the tribe line to fit every single one of those type of customers that we get at eBodyboarding. So, you know, from the Scout, which is the entry level board that any Tom, Dick and Harry can ride in any condition to your board or my board that, you know, suits the top higher end rider so yeah you know. so you know for me specifically on my board i like a board that's going to work in all conditions prone and drop knee warm water cold water so mm -hmm. since i had my first signature board with maury way back in the early 90s i've constantly tweaked it uh, based on what was available to me at the manufacturing side of things and you know, every year of my tribe model, the real deal, I've tweaked something. So I've tried different stuff. I've tried stiffer cores. I've tried mesh, stringer combinations. And, you know, and then I take it to different locations, warm and cold. And, you know, who knows? I love the combination that I'm using and now. And so do others. I might change it in the future. I don't know. Yeah, well, you've got like Abe who, sorry Abe, but... You're, it's a friend of ours. Yeah, he's, um, you know, a guy that rides T-Street. He travels the world also, but he loves Jay's board. And then you've got Espo, Chris Espinosa, who's killing it on your board. So your yep. board, it, you've tweaked it to be perfect for multiple riders, whether yeah. you're intermediate or advanced, whether you're riding heavy shore break or riding T-Street. And my boards are a little that's bit what you do. thicker, too, yeah. than a standard board. Just a couple millimeters thicker. I like a little more volume. You know, back when I was a pro bodyboarder, boards were very thick, two and a half inches thick. 
nowadays, even high volume boards aren't that thick. So I'm, I, I, I'm used to and was brought up riding thicker boards. So I feel like um, it helps me. Now you went the other direction. Your board, the bungee, very thin. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, females are smaller, lighter. Kids are smaller, lighter. And a lot of the brands, particularly back in the day, they made them 42 inch, you know, standard thickness. But what I found, my hands are small. I'm 115 pounds and I need a smaller, thinner board. And I also want flex. I don't want it to be stiff because I'm not that strong. I work out, but you know, not that strong. She's strong. And, you know, but there's other females <laughs> and other kids out there that aren't, that want, I feel like they need a board that's more flexible and thinner and not the standard model that comes with other brands. So hence the reason we came out with the Squaw and the Bungie, because we found that need with our customers for me bodyboarding that needed that smaller, thinner board. And when you go the opposite direction too, we came out with the Chief and a higher volume board. And the Hunter. And the Hunter, yeah. So being that we surf too, you know, we knew that there are surfboards out there that come, you, you order them by volume. I yeah. remember I wanted a new surfboard to take to Fiji this year. And I was like, I need to look, what did you say? You need to look for a certain leader because I needed yeah. more volume. Right. I'm not a very good short boarder. I'm actually not a very good long boarder either, but I wanted to go shorter. So in order for me to ride the waves, I needed to get into them easier. And in order to get into them easier, I needed a higher volume. Yes. So that's kind of what initiated us to make the Chief and the Hunter for bodyboards was to make them a higher volume, right? Yeah, well, and the other part of this puzzle is the, the board again movement. I've talked about it in yeah. prior podcasts before, but the board agains are our older riders returning to the sport and they've gained weight and they're trying to ride these modern bodyboards that are very thin two inches mm -hmm. thick when they were raised riding two and a half two and three quarter inch thick boards mm -hmm. so they get on these new thin boards and they just can't float and can't catch waves so we're like these guys need the thicker boards mm -hmm. right yes. so that's where the chief and the hunter come in um with uh with the tribe line so yeah. so we're able to adapt our line based on what our customers need yeah with the customer needs yeah. so yeah we're stoked that there's been great support for the mm -hmm. brand our tribe guard which is kind of our bread and butter board it's a uh, standard thickness board but it's a really inexpensive polypropylene core board which are hard to find these days mm -hmm. those ones we have in like nine sizes mm -hmm. and that's really kind of the the great step up from the entry level without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. So a lot of and people like And there's guys like at the that. wedge that ride them. You know, yeah. there's top guys that ride that board too because yep. of the price and the yep. materials. Um, and we also launched other products. We tried soft top surfboards. That was a struggle because it's really expensive to ship them. Too. Yeah, there's a lot of competition in that space. It's very expensive to ship a soft top board. So a lot of people wouldn't order them online. So we got out of that. We we have soft skim boards, which we still sell, and those do very yeah, well for one. us. And Vicky's going to go grab one and show you. Um, sorry again for the audio podcast listeners. Oh, you yeah. won't get to see this, but you can see it cool on our graphic website. Graphic bottoms we can do. So yeah, this is it's made of bodyboard materials. It's a it's a slick with a foam deck with a, actually a little grip pattern mm -hmm. on it. So it's a great sort of entry level skim board that's not going to you know, give you um, shin, shin bruises if you blow it and eat it. Um, so, and we have those in two sizes. We also have bags, a whole line of bags, leashes. We've got fin socks, booties, all with the Tribe brand name on them. Mm -hmm. So we really expanded, you know, that whole line into its own product line. We kind of make what we need, don't we? And what we find that yeah. isn't out there and you know, we've done the cinch sock. We're like, I love it. I want to have a sock and a cinch and a heel paddle in one. So we make it and yeah. Yeah. So what's the future plans for tribe? Mm. <laughs> Vicky's always coming up with ideas. Yeah. I'm crazy. Um, she owns like 50 domains because <laughs> she comes up with these ideas and buys domains. So Some of who knows? 
Junior gods, look at that one. Well, yeah, so we won't get into that <laughs> no. now. But in any case... There's some crude ones, too. That is... Yeah, we definitely won't get into those <laughs> on this podcast. Maybe we can do another one yeah. that's adults a only. fan only. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of stuff we could get into. Anyway, so that pretty much sums up the whole vibe behind Tribe, the Tribe vibe, mm -hmm. as I like to say. Mm -hmm. um, and we're stoked to everyone who already owns a Tribe board or bag or leash or fin socks or whatever for supporting our brand. Thank you. We definitely mm -hmm. want to keep that rocking and, um, you know, adjust to the market. You know, we, we try to, like, fill those voids in the market with our product line. Is that a, is that a bad omen right there? That no, that it's, a good omen. it's a good omen. It's like a bird pooping on your shoulder. <laughs> Good luck, said somebody who got pooped on many times and decided to put a positive spin on it. So uh, that's pretty much it, folks. Check out all the Tribe line on our website. Or you can just go to tribeboards.com, which basically bounces you to, yeah. to the eBodyboarding website and all the product on there. And uh, that's it. Any final words on Tribe? think so okay yeah. she doesn't think so neither yeah. do i i think we covered it all so yeah. for vicky real and myself jay real thanks for joining us for another episode of the real deal show if you're watching on youtube and you haven't already subscribed please do so now and click that little bell so that it notifies you every time we release a new video we've been releasing a lot of videos this year including our vlog which is called keeping it real we just launched another episode of that from our first week of Tavarua, and we have plenty more to come throughout the year. So thanks for tuning in. Give us a thumbs up and likes uh, and comments if you want us to respond to that. And uh, we'll see you next time. And thanks as always, for your support. we will see you, see you on the surf. Yep, over and out.